Hi, everyone. Welcome to our podcast, Don't Touch My Music. I am Shardini, and I'm here with my co-host, Kiana. Hi. Today, we're going to be covering part two of the Collecting Societies episode. Um, for those of you who have listened to our previous Monday's episode, we talked about PROs, which would be performance rights organizations, and we explained what they are and what they do. Um, so in this episode, we'll be covering the other half, which is MROs, which are mechanical rights organizations. Um, but before we get into it, we just want to briefly go over or recap what collecting societies are. Um, yeah. So um, as Chardonnay said, we're going to go over what collecting societies or CMOs are once more again, just to refresh the little dome or whatever. Yeah. Um, so basically, collecting societies or collective management organizations, CMOs, are international organizations that are responsible for monitoring, licensing, and collecting performance and mechanical rights for their clients. Um, they have two main parts. The first one is the PRO part, which is the performance rights organization part, which is what we covered last week. Um, and the second part is the MRO part, which is the mechanical rights organizations part, which we're going to cover today. Yes. So um, some of you may ask, what is a mechanical rights organization? Well, a mechanical rights organization is an agency that is responsible for administering mechanical licenses, as well as collecting and distributing the mechanical royalties to publishers and songwriters. Uh, mechanical royalties are earned every time a musical work is reproduced and or a reproduction of a musical work is purchased. Um, so for example, reproduction of a musical work would refer to physical copies of musical works, so such as um, reproduction of a song or a composition on a CD, a vinyl, or a cassette. So it also includes uh, streaming service users choosing to play a song. So for example, if you're on Spotify, Tidal, or um, Apple Music, and you choose to play a specific song of your choice, that is also included or is known as reproduction. Um, and lastly, digital tracks that are purchased and downloaded. So for example, if you purchased an album or a song on um, iTunes iTunes, and you downloaded it to your iPhone or iPad. Also, as a little side note that we thought was important to highlight is that outside of the United States, most countries actually don't have separate agencies or companies for um, PROs and MROs, they rather have CMOs, which is, as we said earlier, a combination of the two in just one agency that covers both types of royalties. Um, but yeah, the US makes use of both. So going right back to MROs, um, I want to list a few of the main tasks that they do, uh, which is pretty similar to PROs. Um, but yeah, so one of the things that they do is license the use of registered works. Um, they also collect and distribute royalties and they conduct royalty examinations and investigations for piracy claims. So diving a little deeper into what MROs do, starting with licensing, it's also very, very similar to what PROs do. So songwriters and or publishers should ideally be registered with an MRO or a CMO in order to receive mechanical royalties. So having said that the licensing process is pretty similar to what PROs do, um, I want to add that how the licenses or the types of licenses are distributed or decided on um, is really dependent on how the musical work is going to be reproduced. Um, so for example, when a label is releasing physical copies of <clears throat> an album, how many copies are going to be made? What formats yeah. are the copies being made in? So vinyl, cassette, CD, and where are those copies being distributed in terms of countries, continents, all of the above? Exactly. Um, so those are the factors that really play into what kind of license gets issued. Yeah. So the second thing that they do is distributing royalties. Um, so when a license is 
issued or when licenses are issued, um, the mechanical rights organization will record the use um, as well as any other relevant data in order to distribute the correct royalties um, to the respective copyright owners. So the last task is royalty examinations and piracy claims. And this is where they make sure that registered members are receiving all the royalties they are owed and um, they audit any missing uh, royalties. Another thing that they do is make sure that there is no unlawful use of the registered um, members' musical work, so aka bootleg copies of CDs being made and distributed. So like just someone copying the CDs, reproducing it and selling it on the side of the road, which is so funny because they do that in the Caribbean. Everywhere it's an issue. I, but I remember persons like selling these CDs of like Beyonce and yeah. Rihanna and all those persons. Like, yeah, on the and side the, of the concert road. DVDs and shit and everything. Yeah, and they have like the full cover um of the single or the album and i'm like okay this prob me being young you know i'm like oh yeah. this is probably legit <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know little did um, you know little did i know so those were the main tasks that we explained a bit more in depth um now we're gonna list a few mros that we think you should know um the first one being Harry Fox Agency that is located in the USA. Um, it represents over 48,000 registered members, and it issues the largest number of licenses for physical and digital formats of music. Before I head on to the others, what I wanted to say is that when I attended Berkeley for my exchange, um, there was a class called Record Labels and a and r or a and r and Record Labels, something like that. Um, and we talked about mechanical rights and how it is different in the U.S. Um, compared to other countries, you know, mm. around the world. And the professor specifically brought up Harry Fox. And we sat in a class and actually went on the site for Harry Fox. And we literally went through it and um, saw, like, how things were put together. It's pretty easy. Because mm. when I saw it, I was like, oh, this is not complicated at all compared to other, um, I guess mechanical rights organizations or just um collecting societies collecting societies in general it's usually complicated you have like complicated forms to fill out things to yeah. read and so forth but when i went on the website for harry fox it was pretty easy you know to navigate so i think that i thought was very cool and they would just collect all the royalties for you mechanical wise and just send it over to the publisher um yeah. to get everything sorted out so i was like okay this is cool this is so handy this is it's it looks so neat and well organized yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you know? i was snooping um, on their website earlier yeah um the other mro that you should know is um prs for music that is located in the uk um i mentioned this as well in our previous episode with pros mm -hmm. um so this is actually a collecting society that is both a performance rights um organization and mechanical rights organization so they do both um and they represent around 160,000 registered members so that's that's quite a lot but i think i also mentioned that in the previous episode as well so moving on to the third mro that we think you should know um this one is actually located in australia it's called apra amcos um and the amcos part is the mechanical rights part um and amcos stands for Australasian Mechanical Copyright Owners Society. Um, and APRA AMCOS jointly represents around 100,000 registered members. Bitch, 100,000. Yeah. And that's... That's, that's, that's across Australia and New Zealand. Oh, wow. We got to check out the music industry over there. This is what I'm saying. I'm like, yeah. hello, what's going on in the Australian music business? You know, I've never um really dived into like the Australian music business like I would always dive into like US of course um the Netherlands uh UK a bit like the yeah. UK rap, trap music type yeah so Australian music industry you gotta get into that for sure I know yeah. some like Australian musicians I know an Australian band mm. uh it's five seconds of summer they're all Australian their name is familiar but I don't know if I've they sing young blood but I like haven't actually done a a deep dive yeah, yeah, into yeah. the Australian music industry. I would have to. 
Going into the last two MROs, we have Puma Stemra, once again, from the Netherlands, except this time, Stemra is the part that we're focusing on, because Stemra is the one that is responsible for mechanical rights. Um, and as we said last week, collectively, Puma Stemra represents 33,000 registered members. Um, and then the last one is Capasso from South Africa. It stands for Composers, Authors, and Publishers Association. Um, there were no statistics on their website in terms of how many registered members they have, but they did have a really cool About Us animated video. So check them out mm -hmm. or whatever. Mm -hmm. Like, I thought the video was sick. <laughs> I was entertained. Um, but yeah, those are the ones that we could find that we thought would be good to know about. Yeah. Um, as Chardonnay said earlier, outside of the US, it's really not that common for CMOs to be separated into MROs and PROs. Um, so yeah, everywhere is mostly just like CMO situations that do both. So correction, it was me who said it, <laughs> not Chardonnay. <Yeah. laughs> I have no recollection. <laughs> um, but but yeah, so just little little short and sweet situation on CMOs. Yeah. There isn't much, not CMOs, MROs. My brain is confusion. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so there isn't much information out there about MROs just because of how, I guess you could say, uncommon they are. Yeah. Um, so really the inner workings of the, I had to, do you know how hard I had to dig <laughs> mm -hmm. for information on on like the inner workings of mros yeah um but look we found a little bit we figured we'd we'd share it um yeah. because you know once again it's important for publishers and songwriters alike to know about this shit um yeah. Go forth and prosper. Let us transition into our little side side corner chat. <laughs> yes. Exciting. <laughs> yes. Um, for those of you who are not familiar, every Monday episode, me and Chardonnay set aside time for some chit chat where yeah. we talk about our two favorite songs for this week. And also we ask each other a question that has to do with music, the music industry, just music related things in general. So, Chardonnay, what's your what's your what's your first song? My favorite song for this week is Control by Yemi Alade. Madame Yemi. Madame Yemi. Making so, another appearance on the podcast. Yes. <laughs> so I've been listening to this song the entire week of last week. Mm -hmm. um, and I will also be listening to it again this week because it's a jam. It's a banger. Um, and it's from one of her recent albums. It's not so recent, recent, mm. um, but I think it's an album back, like one album back. Mm -hmm. But um, no, I love that song. It's like kind of, it's like African, but with dancehall fusion. Nice. So I'm like, Yemi, you did it. Hello. This is my jam. This is my <laughs> area. Shirley um, said, I am in my element here. Yes. Exactly. So that's my first song okay. for the week that I've been listening to and will be listening to for the rest of the week guaranteed exactly yeah <laughs> it's yummy yeah. what what's your first um song uh okay so my first song is called devil doesn't bargain mm -hmm. it's by alec benjamin mm -hmm. it's off his newest album which he released on friday this past friday oh, okay yeah um he is a indie singer songwriter from the u.s and mm. he has like a really pretty delicate voice and he just makes like pretty songs <laughs> <laughs> and i was listening i was listening to the album actually this morning i was listening to the album and i was like oh i'm gonna play this song multiple times is, is his I, voice like is his voice delicate uh, explain to me how delicate like or how soft like is his voice like kind of like in the higher in the higher tone yeah and it's just like yeah. soft and delicate you probably know um because like the the song that made him super famous was let me down slowly yeah that melody is so you know the thing for me right with music 
like the melody okay the lyrics is one thing but the melody ooh the melody i feel like the touch your soul bitch like sometimes like when scissor gives like a melody i'm like ooh scissor this <laughs> yeah yeah like this touch me you Listen. know what i mean but yeah so that is my first song once mm-hmm. again Devil Doesn't Bargain by Alec Benjamin. Mm. What's your second one? So my second song is We Go Up from Nicki Minaj featuring Fabio Foreign. Mm-hmm. That song is a banger. Like the lyrics. No, now I think when it comes to lyrics, I'll be more attentive in rap. Mm-hmm. But when it comes to like songs, give me the melody. Yeah. Like give me the melody for the song. And give you the lyrics for rap. Um, yeah, yeah. Because when Nikki spits, I'm listening. Like, I'm so attentive. I'm like, ooh, you, Nikki, you got a mouth, <laughs> girl. <laughs> please, please. Chardonnay said, relax. <laughs> yeah. The things that she said in that song, I'm like, I don't know who it's for, but who? Yeah, no. No, and you know what's so crazy with Nikki? It's like mm. she'll always be like, "I'm not beefing with anyone." But then when her song comes out, we'll be like, "Girl, who you beefing with?" No, exactly. So, I'm like, like, "Yes, you are." <laughs> <laughs> what is your second song? My second song is called "Wildfire" by Mr. Eric Nam, mm-hmm. um, who is a Korean American singer songwriter. And like you were talking about melody and shit, wildfire. That's why I picked it. <laughs> That's why I picked it because I was listening to it and I'm like, it slaps. There's like mm. vocal layering in there. That's so. I good. love a good layering. Yeah, yeah, there's vocal layering in there. That's so good. It's like the song almost sounds like an acapella. Mm. Because like the instrumental is so chill and so light, and like mm-hmm. there's a lot of emphasis based what there's a lot of emphasis placed she was talking about based um on the vocals Mm. i love when they do vocal layering and they put emphasis on the vocals because you could hear the the fullness Mm -hmm. of the vocals Mm -hmm. um and just hear everything so crisp and clear yeah i don't know that's that's amazing to me like i don't know how else to say or how else to put it like it's crazy like i would listen like I would literally listen to an entire album that is just full of vocal layering. Like the last time I heard an album like that was actually Linkin Park because they released mm. like vocal only versions of their albums. I'm not sure if they've done it more than once actually. Now that I'm thinking about it, but I think they might have. Mm. And so you could hear all like the vocal layering and stuff. Oh, it was so sick! I would just put that yeah. shit on and I'd just be chilling in art yes. school should i ask you the question first or do you want to ask me first let me ask you first okay okay so if you magically gained the ability to <laughs> i like how you're always magically giving me abilities <laughs> <laughs> okay Listen. go if Ooh. you magically gained the ability to play an instrument, mm-hmm. which instrument would it be and why? Oh, that's easy. Um, I've told you before. I don't remember mm-hmm. if I told the podcast before. I used to play the drums. like the, Oh, yes. The, the drum kit. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I wish I ne- like part of me is like, I wish I didn't give that shit up. But another part of me is like, I would have never put in the time. <laughs> <laughs> I would yeah. have never put in the time to actually get really good at it. And that's not me saying that I was bad at it. I was learning. Um, yeah. But I didn't have, like, I don't have that ability to just freestyle. I have to learn mm-hmm. things properly. Otherwise, I'm not going to do it. Do it. Yeah. <clears throat> so I remember when I used to go to my drumming lessons, I would drum side by side with my teacher. So he would be on one drum kit and I'd be on the other one. Mm hmm. And we'd be playing a song and then he'd be like, okay, freestyle. And he'd stop playing and tell me to continue playing. And I'd just sit there like with holding the sticks, like, what do you mean freestyle? Mm, (laughs) You can't just tell me to freestyle. I don't know how to do those things. Like what? (laughs) 
it was like you have to tell me what to freestyle yeah 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 so like basically i needed the whole thing to be scripted otherwise it's not gonna happen she yeah. said scripted she said it? scripted <laughs> yeah she, she said, said scripted like it's tv <laughs> <laughs> but you know what i mean um yeah. so part of me is like i wish i never gave it up but another part of me was like realistically you know mm. Meh. <laughs> um but yeah drums bitch yeah drums okay, cool, they're cool. so fun i actually thought that you were gonna say piano or the flute i don't know why i just see you as a person yeah. that would maybe play the piano and then maybe play the flute listen I don't know. as as a youth recorder and keyboard it was me i was good at it i was so yeah. good at it the recorder yeah. and the keyboard mm -hmm. We only had music lessons until a specific grade at school. And as soon as the music lesson stopped, I dropped the recorder, I dropped the keyboard. That's my that's my issue. As soon as as soon as there's nobody pressuring me to do the shit, I'm not She's gonna like, do no, it. Okay, I'm not, I'm not doing it. It's over. Yeah, when it comes to when it comes to these like skills that require you to be like diligent, you know what yeah. I mean? But like I enjoyed playing the keyboard, but it also wasn't my favorite. As a kid, I was always like, I wanna play the drums. And mm -hmm. then I enjoyed the recorder, but the recorder is also a bit of a silly instrument. And I was like, imagine <laughs> saying I'm a professional recorder player. Like, please relax. <laughs> no offense to people who actually are, but like, it made me feel silly as a kid. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm not gonna. I, I wasn't. I was. I wasn't gonna pursue that further. <laughs> what is your question, Beth? You always put me on a spot with question. What question you have for me today? This one's easy. This one's you easy. Said and that, I, you said that last time. Okay, but that one caught you off guard. This one's not going to catch you off guard. Um, How do you know? Because I feel like I know what you're going to answer. Okay. So, <laughs> so okay. So, let me look at my little paper. <laughs> <laughs> she wrote it down. <laughs> um, so, is there a musician you think the world needs to get on board with immediately? So, like, a musician that you think is underrated coco jones i knew it <laughs> hello coco jones hello courtney yeah. jones coco jones from bel-air exactly period coco jones like get on coco right now like go stream caliber that's her new single mm -hmm. when the album drops buy it and stream it mm -hmm. also go watch bel-air coco jones mm -hmm. like i've been following coco's journey since disney channel because she was on Disney Channel. She featured, um, she was featured in a few shows. Like, um, she was featured on So Random. So Random was also called Sunny with a Chance, something like that. Yeah, yeah. So Random. Sunny with yeah. a Chance. Sunny I with watched a that chance. the other month. <laughs> right. Sunny with a Chance. So Random. Coco was featured there. Coco was also featured on many other shows on Disney Channel till she even had her own show, Let It Shine, mm -hmm. um, which was actually a movie. Um, but then after that, I haven't heard anything from her, but I've been following her since then. And I would see that she would be making like YouTube videos talking about her certain, about certain things that happened to her in her life. Um, and now she's on Bel Air and she's also signed to Def Jam Records. Yeah. I'm just so happy for her. Like get guys get with Coco. Like she actually waited, not even waited. She actually put in the work. I don't want to say struggle, but. It took her 10 years to be where she's at today. Mm. From leaving Disney Channel to being on Bel Air and being signed to Def Jam Records, it took her 10 years. Mm. That is wild, you know? And her being so young as well is also inspiring as well, you know? Because she never gave up. Even though there were times that she said she wanted to give up, yeah. um, she never gave up. Yeah. And look at her today. Signed to Def Jam, releasing the singles, about to release an album is a main star on Bel Air. I know she has many more um things coming her way. Yeah. This is for just sure. the beginning for her. Like yeah. she is she's literally blowing up online right now. She like she really is. I I cannot be scrolling on YouTube or Instagram without seeing Coco or without anybody mentioning Coco. I'm yeah. like wow there was a time when no one talked about her. Yeah. No some people like okay People knew about her, but there was nothing to talk about because she wasn't being booked. She wasn't really releasing music. She would just do covers online or whatever. But 
Coco, let me stop rambling. But Coco, people get on Coco Jones. I told you Listen. it was an easy question. Yes. As I Coco. was writing it down, I was like, Charnay is going to say Coco Jones. Listen, like, he's correct. I want, <laughs> I want Coco to be my best friend. Like, literally. Coco literally acts like me or you. Yeah. Like, her antics and her personality. Yeah. It's just like yours and mine's. Like, just clown things. Clown, clown things. things. Silly, Coco. goofy things. Yeah. yeah I love no, she Coco seems, Jones. She seems super fun. Yeah. Okay. So... That's that on that for the episode. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, as we always say, if you have any questions about what we spoke about today, you can come find us on our social media, which I will list just now. Um, <laughs> if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe, turn on post notifications. If you are listening on Spotify or Anchor, Follow the podcast, rate the podcast. You can go drop a comment on Anchor if you feel like it. Um, and follow our social media accounts. Don't touch my music pod on TikTok and Instagram. So yes. slide into the DMs or into the comments if you know you have questions about yeah. episodes that we've spoken about, about music things in general, if you just want to talk, if you just want to gossip. <laughs> 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 gossip about music and, and stuff um we're there we're active especially on instagram not so much on tiktok because tiktok is hard <laughs> <laughs> yeah it, it um, requires a lot of um time time we do not have currently yeah so yeah. um yeah the most likely place where you can find us is on instagram yeah so tune in on Thursday, we'll be back with another silly, goofy episode. But yeah, that's it. Yeah. Mm. Bye. Okay, bye. <laughs>